Keep it on us tonight with a disturbing new report that the agency tasked with keeping us all safe when we travel is spending millions upon millions of dollars on screening equipment that's sitting in warehouses unused. It's a fact, according to the House uh, Transportation Oversight Committees, that the TSA tried to hide from Congress. And this comes in the wake of the foiled Al-Qaeda plot to blow up a plane bound for the United States. The goal had been to use an innovative type of bomb that would reportedly be difficult to detect even in a pat-down. Well, needless to say, security concerns at airports are as serious as ever. Today, a scathing congressional report says the TSA is storing about 5,700 pieces of security equipment at warehouses in Dallas, Texas, equipment worth an estimated $184 million. The report also says the TSA dragged its feet when Congress tried to get information about how it buys and stores screening equipment that the TSA, quote, provided inaccurate, incomplete, and potentially misleading information to Congress in order to conceal the agency's continued mismanagement of warehouse operations. Now, in response, the Department of Homeland Security says the TSA buys technology in bulk to save money, but that it doesn't buy more inventory that it expects to use. That it, quote, utilizes warehouse space as staging locations until airports are able to accept the equipment. Keep in mind, the congressional report says the vast majority of that equipment, though, has been sitting there for more than six months and that 35 percent of the equipment has been in storage for more than a year. And get this, according to Congress, it's costing the TSA three and a half million dollars a year just to store that equipment at the Dallas warehouse. At a hearing on uh, Capitol Hill today, a TSA official said that's down from $7.6 million in 2009. So while the TSA seems to want to highlight how much it's trying to save taxpayers, the congressional report says all it's really doing is throwing millions of dollars at the problem of airport security without solving anything. Uh, Re Representative Darrell Issa is leading this investigation. He's the head of the House Oversight Committee, a Republican. I spoke with him earlier this evening. Congressman, I saw $184 million of equipment sitting around in warehouses not being used. That seems like, just on the face of it, an enormous waste of money. Well, Anderson, it's a small amount of money considering the $13 billion plus dollars of expenditures, but it's part of the sort of the tip of the iceberg of what's wrong with TSA. Uh, they have over 65,000 uh, employees, over 4,000 that just work here in Washington doing the administration. Uh, it's an organization that doesn't seem to have ever developed their plan. Their own inspector general made it clear that they're not making a lot of progress toward efficiency. And their buying practices seem to be more about buy a lot of stuff to look like you're doing well, rather than finding out whether a particular piece of equipment will work properly and then fielding it uh, more economically. They say essentially, well, look, a lot of the airports weren't ready for the equipment or didn't have the personnel to, to staff the equipment. Well, you know, Anderson, and I spent a lot of time doing the logistics of a comparatively small company, but a couple hundred million dollars, you learn something. One of them is your vendors are more than happy if you'll prepay to hold the goods and drop ship directly to locations. There's lots of logistic ways to deal with it. But what we heard today was that in some cases, two years after delivery, they still hadn't identified the airports for things to go to, which means they bought them without knowing if and or when they'd go anywhere. And in the case of what many people remember, these so-called puffer uh, devices, uh, they spent a billion, they never worked, and, uh, and then they didn't know how to dispose of them, so they sat in storage for a couple more years. You say the TSA did not even want your investigators to show up. What happened when you showed up uh, on site at the warehouse? Well, the inspector general today has agreed to look into this more thoroughly, but what appears to have happened is that they gave us a list in advance of what was in the warehouse and a dollar figure and then in the hours, two, two or so days before we got there, they brought in uh, extra work early and they liquidated at least 1,300 pieces that were not on that inventory that they didn't want to show us. In other words, they cooked the books to make it look better, but did it after they gave us an inventory list, uh, something that, at least in my background in the Army, if you tried to smuggle stuff around before an inspector general inspection, you'd go to jail. And, uh, so we're deeply concerned that this kind of hiding of flaws is exactly what you don't want when you're doing oversight, whether you're the Congress, Inspector General, the General Accountability Office. The, the TSA, I know, for their part, said that they weren't trying to hide anything, that the equipment was already scheduled to be moved. Do you, do you not buy that? Well, I can only say what my own employee said uh, to me, which was that he talked directly to uh, warehouse managers who, when he asked why there weren't any employees there, he said, well, we brought them in specially early to get all this stuff out. And so they're gone. Uh, in other words, these were not segregated and planned to be gotten rid of, but they had to work overtime to do it. Uh, again, we've turned that over to the inspector general. It, uh, 
it's, it's, it's a distraction because it's not the cover-up in this case, it's what we now know, which is this is an organization that buys before it plans, that hires before it trains, and that uses as an excuse that they don't have enough training, when in fact even our Democratic members pointed out that when it comes to morale and effectiveness of leadership, TSA is almost at the very, very bottom of all federal organizations. We're not talking about the employees. We're talking about the morale of the employees because of bad management. Supporters of, of the TSA will say that this report is biased, that, that Chairman Michael, who led the investigation with you, uh, has it out for the TSA, wants to privatize the screening. Um, to that, you say what? Well, Chairman Micah may have a lot of things, and I can't know that. What I can say is that my investigators uh, found an organization in need of improvement with an extremely important job, one that we believe could be done, if done by federal workers, could be done with less federal workers, better organized, with better morale, paid well, trained well, with good equipment. And that's the goal, unless Congress and the President change their mind, that we're working toward is an organization that instead of being ninth from the bottom in morale and training, in fact, starts to look where it needs to be if we're going to keep America safe and people flying efficiently. This obviously comes right on the heels of the, the discovery of a terrorist plot to blow up an airplane. Should Americans have faith that the TSA is capable of doing what's necessary to keep them safe? Well, Anderson, I think in the case of that uh, failed bombing attempt, we should be proud that the restructured CIA that has been rebuilt in the last decade, uh, in fact, proactively had agent involved, found this and uncovered it before we ever had to ask the question of would TSA have found it with their equipment that you may or may not have gone through. So I'm happy to say CIA did their job. My job is to make sure that the men and women of TSA have the tools and the training they need so that we can be more confident that uh, our flyers are safe. And by the way, We'd like to get them through the lines a lot faster, too. Chairman Issa, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.